Did you know that Switzerland is one of the only countries in the world that doesn't have a capital city? Intriguing, isn't it? Now, you might be wondering, how can a country not have a capital? Well, in the case of Switzerland, it's a little bit of a semantic puzzle. You see, the Swiss constitution does not designate an official capital. Instead, it refers to the seat of federal authorities, which is located in the charming city of Bern. But don't be mistaken, Bern is not officially the capital. It's more of a de facto capital, if you will. It's one of the little quirks that sets Switzerland apart, a country that often surprises with its unique blend of tradition and innovation. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to learn about this fascinating country nestled in the heart of Europe. So let's dive into the heart of Europe and uncover more about the Swiss Confederation. Situated in the heart of Europe, Switzerland finds itself surrounded by five nations. This landlocked beauty, nestled amidst an array of landscapes, shares its borders with France to the west, Italy to the south, Germany to the north, and Austria and Liechtenstein to the east. Each of these neighbours has left an indelible imprint on Switzerland's culture and history, making it a rich tapestry of diverse influences. Switzerland's geographical location is a marvel in itself. It stands out as a unique entity, not just because it's landlocked, but also due to its compact size. Despite being only about four times the size of Greater London, it packs in a surprising amount of geographical diversity. Its total land area is approximately 41,000 square kilometers, a small fraction when compared to its larger European neighbors, yet its impact and influence stretch far beyond its borders. When it comes to the physical features of Switzerland, one cannot overlook the majestic Alps. These towering peaks dominate the southern and eastern regions of the country, encapsulating the quintessential image of Switzerland that many hold dear. These snow-capped mountains, some reaching above 4,000 meters, are home to glaciers, alpine meadows and serene mountain lakes. They not only provide a playground for winter sports enthusiasts, but also serve as a vital source of water. To the north and west of the alpine region, the landscape transforms into the Swiss Plateau, this area, characterized by rolling hills, plains and large lakes, is the heartland of Switzerland. It's where the majority of the country's population resides and where its economic activity is concentrated. Then there's the Jura mountain range, a rugged and scenic area that stretches along the country's western border with France. It's a haven for hikers, nature lovers and anyone seeking tranquility away from the bustling cities. With such geographical diversity, Switzerland offers landscapes as diverse as the languages spoken here. From the towering Alps to the serene lakes of the Swiss Plateau and the rugged beauty of the Jura Mountains, Switzerland is a land of contrasts, each region offering a unique slice of this fascinating country. Dating back to 1291, Switzerland has a rich history etched in the annals of time. The birth of Switzerland as we know it today can be traced back to the early Middle Ages. The first union of the three original Swiss cantons, Uri, Schwitz and Unterwalden, was established in that year, marking the nascent beginning of the Swiss Confederation. In the centuries that followed, the Swiss Confederation expanded, incorporating other cantons. This expansion wasn't always peaceful, though, with power struggles and conflicts frequently dotting the landscape of Swiss history. The old Swiss Confederacy, as it was known, saw its share of battles and political upheavals, but it managed to hold together, growing stronger with each passing century. Around the turn of the 16th century, Switzerland found itself in the throes of the Protestant Reformation. Switzerland was the birthplace of one of the Reformation's key figures, Huldrych Zwingli. His teachings, along with those of John Calvin, another Swiss reformer, played a crucial role in redefining religious beliefs and practices not only in Switzerland but also in Europe as a whole. This period is of great significance as it shaped Switzerland's religious landscape leading to the coexistence of Catholic and Protestant cantons. Fast forward to the 19th century and we find Switzerland on the brink of a new era. The Industrial Revolution had begun to take hold transforming the country from a largely agrarian society into a modern industrial nation. Swiss industries, particularly watchmaking, textiles and machinery, began to flourish. The Gotthard Railway Tunnel, completed in the late 19th century, stands as a testament to the industrial prowess of the Swiss nation during this time. The 20th century was a time of significant political change for Switzerland. 
In 1848, the modern Swiss federal state was established, marking a shift from a loose confederation of cantons to a more centralized federal state. Women, however, had to wait until the 20th century to gain suffrage. It wasn't until 1971, much later than most Western countries, that Swiss women were granted the right to vote at the federal level. In the same century, Switzerland cemented its long-standing tradition of neutrality. This policy, which had its roots in the early days of the Swiss Confederation, became officially recognized by the European powers at the Congress of Vienna in 1815. Since then, the Swiss have maintained their neutrality through two world wars, serving as mediators and providing humanitarian aid. Today, Switzerland stands as a beacon of stability and prosperity. Its political stability, high standard of living and strong economy have earned it a place among the world's most developed countries. Switzerland's commitment to innovation and excellence is evident in its world-class universities, research institutions and multinational corporations. From its humble beginnings, Switzerland has emerged as a significant player on the global stage. Its rich history, marked by periods of conflict, reformation, industrialization and political change, has shaped the Switzerland we know today. A small nation nestled in the heart of Europe, Switzerland has indeed carved a unique place for itself in the annals of world history. In a world rife with conflict, Switzerland stands as a beacon of peace and neutrality. This isn't by mere happenstance. It's a deeply ingrained part of Swiss identity a conscious choice that has shaped the nation's history and its global relations. This neutrality dates back to the early 19th century after the tumultuous period of the Napoleonic Wars. The Swiss, having experienced the ravages of war, sought to distance themselves from the machinations of power politics. In 1815, at the Congress of Vienna, Switzerland's perpetual neutrality was recognized by the European powers. This meant that Switzerland was obliged not to engage in armed conflict unless attacked, and other nations reciprocally pledged to respect this neutrality. The Swiss neutrality, however, is not just about abstaining from military conflicts. It's a more encompassing notion that has shaped the country's foreign policy and has had a profound influence on its international relations. Switzerland often serves as a mediator in international disputes, acting as an impartial go-between for nations at odds. This role has earned Switzerland a reputation for diplomacy and peacekeeping, further solidifying its status as a neutral entity. This neutrality has also had domestic implications. It's reflected in the Swiss political system, which is characterized by consensus decision-making and in the nation's commitment to humanitarianism. The Swiss Red Cross, founded in 1863, is a testament to this commitment. And let's not forget the Swiss tradition of providing asylum to those fleeing conflict, a practice rooted in this same principle of neutrality. Switzerland's neutrality is not without its critics, of course. Some argue that it allows the country to avoid taking a stand on important moral issues. Others claim that it's a convenient cover for maintaining lucrative relationships with contentious regimes. Yet despite these criticisms, the Swiss have remained steadfast in their commitment to neutrality. So in a world where alliances shift and conflicts often seem inevitable, Switzerland remains a constant, its neutrality a symbol of its enduring commitment to peace. Switzerland's commitment to peace is not just a policy, it's a way of life. Switzerland, known for its direct democracy, offers a unique perspective on governance. Nestled within the heart of Europe, Switzerland stands as a beacon of democratic principles. The Swiss form of government is a rare example of direct democracy, a system where citizens have the power to influence legislation directly. This is done through frequent referendums, which are as Swiss as the Alps themselves. In Switzerland, citizens are not just voters, but lawmakers too. If a group of citizens manages to gather 50,000 signatures within 100 days, they can call for a referendum on a law passed by Parliament. If 100,000 signatures are gathered, citizens can propose a constitutional amendment. It's a system that ensures the voice of the people is not just heard, but is integral to the decision-making process. But let's not forget, democracy is not only about voting, but also about participation and the Swiss society is an exemplary model for this. From local assemblies in town squares, known as Landsgemeinde, to the highest echelons of the federal government, Swiss citizens are actively involved in the governance of their country. 
Turning our attention to the socio-economic status of Switzerland, it's evident that the nation's unique approach to governance has yielded impressive results. Switzerland boasts one of the highest standards of living in the world. It's a country where the quality of life is not just a catchphrase, but a reality reflected in various aspects of society. Switzerland's robust economy is driven by a diverse range of sectors. The country is renowned for its precision engineering and high-quality manufacturing. Just think Swiss watches. Similarly, pharmaceuticals, finance and tourism are significant contributors to the Swiss economy. It's a nation that has mastered the art of balancing tradition with innovation. The Swiss education and healthcare systems are among the best in the world. Education is highly valued, with a strong emphasis on vocational training and apprenticeships, ensuring a skilled workforce. Healthcare, on the other hand, is universal, with a system that guarantees access to quality medical care for all residents. Income inequality, a global concern, is relatively low in Switzerland. The country's comprehensive social security system and progressive taxation help maintain a balanced society. Here, the wealthier individuals and corporations are taxed at a higher rate, ensuring a fair distribution of resources. But it's not just about economics. The Swiss society places a high value on environmental sustainability and preservation of cultural heritage. The country's commitment to clean energy and recycling is well known, while the preservation of its multilingual heritage and regional traditions is a testament to the respect for diversity. Switzerland's blend of direct democracy and high standard of living is a testament to its unique approach to governance and society. And though the Swiss model may not be perfect, it certainly offers valuable lessons on the power of citizen involvement, the importance of balancing economic progress with social equity, and the necessity of preserving cultural and environmental heritage. As we unravel the Swiss story, it's clear that there's more to Switzerland than cheese, chocolate and watches. This landlocked beauty, nestled in the heart of Europe, has a tale that is as captivating as its landscapes. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've discovered. Switzerland, despite its relatively small size, is a country of immense cultural and geographical diversity. Sandwiched between five countries, it's a blend of German, French, Italian and Romanche influences, creating a unique cultural mosaic. Its stunning landscapes range from the majestic peaks of the Alps to the serene shores of Lake Geneva, offering a visual feast for all who visit. We've delved into the country's rich history, tracing its origins back to the Middle Ages. We've seen how it evolved from a loose confederation of cantons into a unified nation, a journey marked by significant milestones and events. The Swiss have always been fiercely independent and their commitment to neutrality has been a defining characteristic influencing their foreign policy and shaping their international reputation. We've also explored Switzerland's unique form of government. It's a federal republic with a strong emphasis on direct democracy, a system that gives its citizens a significant voice in the country's affairs. This commitment to democracy is reflected in its socio-economic status, with Switzerland consistently ranking among the world's wealthiest nations. So, you see, Switzerland is more than just a picture-perfect destination. It's a country with a deep-rooted history, a unique political system, and a cultural diversity that sets it apart. It's a nation that has managed to maintain its neutrality in a world fraught with conflicts, a testament to its commitment to peace and stability. From its stunning landscapes to its rich history and unique form of government, Switzerland truly is a remarkable country. So, the next time you think of Switzerland, remember, it's more than just a pretty face in the heart of Europe.